Hi friends, it's Danielle here. Uh, today I'm going to show you how I do my fabric washi tape and we'll talk a little bit about that. Um, if you saw my scrappy flowers video, you saw that we had a lot of little scraps left over and if you get tired of making the flowers and you have your little strips left, then this is a really good project for you to use those up and not Put them to waste so these are some that i had made previously i think a lot of people a lot of different people have done these and made these so i would have no idea who to credit the idea to but um there's just different versions so this is just little pieces it's almost like a snippet roll but it's on double-sided tape and that you can get this double-sided tape so the tape i use is this double-sided tape that I purchased from Amazon. This one's Sign World. The brand is Sign World, and they come in all different sizes. You can pretty much buy any size. I think they even make sheets of this double-sided tape, but um, a lot of people use carpet tape, and I, I understand why. It's super, super sticky, um, but I personally haven't had any problems um, using this double-sided tape. I do go back, like I haven't gone back on these yet, but if there's any edge that lifts up, I stick a little bit of glue under there and just kind of um, fold it down. But honestly, I haven't had any issues with it coming off. I, I don't think, you know, that it would. You could always use a little bit of glue. The reason I don't like the, I have some carpet tape, and the reason I don't like the carpet tape, and this is just my personal preference, is it's so sticky. It goops up. It, it goops up my scissors really bad. It's thicker. Um, it's just super sticky. But that's just my personal preference. And honestly, I might just not have given it enough time um, and practice of using it. But it's just, it is very, very sticky. If you stick this, I mean, it's not going anywhere. Um... So just kind of keep that in mind. Most people do use the carpet tape. Um, if you've purchased a journal from me, let me know if you've had any problems with the double-sided tape. In my journals, I haven't had any problems, but um, I would definitely love to know. So we're gonna use these double-sided tapes. And let me see, what else was I gonna, oh, the other thing I was gonna say is even this tape will gum up your scissors. So the more you cut through this tape, the gummier your scissors are going to get. And what you can use is 90, per, I use 90, 90 or 91% um, rubbing alcohol. And I just clean, um, like take some paper towels and clean the blades of the scissors and it comes off if you rub it a little bit with the alcohol. So just a tip. I learned that from somebody else on YouTube. I just don't remember who it was, but definitely want to pass that along because that was, a really good tip for getting the gunk off your scissors. All right, so let's get started. We have this pile of scraps here and I'm gonna do some of the smaller ones just because I feel like you don't see it as much. Um, so what I do is I just take the tape and open it up and then you can take like something to just stick to hold it down so I just am using a glue stick and then let me make sure you guys can see what I'm doing here okay and then what I do is you want to make sure that your strips are like a little bit they don't have to be perfect but a little bit straight I mean this is how I do it you could do it where it's um, wonky where you kind of overlap and fill in um, it would be a lot faster. You would need to go back with the glue and glue down the overlap with the fabric. But um, to get the look that I generally have in my journals, this is what I do. And this one's kind of got some goop there. So we'll start with this. So I just start by placing some fabric and you wanna place it to where, like this one, I don't want to place it in the middle because then I'll have overhang on each side. Here I have a larger overhang on this side. So when I trim this, I'll have this piece to use on another piece of washi. And I know that sounds really stingy, um, but it's just a good way to make sure you're using it all, using it all up. And then I come in and I just, you know, stagger, make things different. I try not to 
with these type of with this washi tape I don't want it to I want it to be more eclectic and farm types type look um but if you want it to you know coordinate more then you would of course coordinate your fabrics but you just kind of come in here and you you just play around with different amounts of each fabric showing and then like I said you want to kind of have it squared up a little bit I mean that's how I do it and then a little bit of overlap and then you'll start to see this coming together and then let's see what haven't I used this way and then this way and you can vary the um, the lengths and sizes that makes it look more interesting in the end so all of these are projects are a labor of love this is not a quick I mean it's fairly quick but it is a detailed project I think let's see I've gotten let's see if this is wide enough to fit here yep. it's a lot easier to do not on camera <laughs> like everything else probably and then we haven't used this one And then I haven't gone a full length this way in a, in a few fabrics. So let's just go that way. And then I do just try to make sure I don't, I'm not using the same fabric right next to the same fabric. I really hope I'm staying in frame. I think I am. Each video I will get better. At least I hope. Let's see. I haven't used this one yet. And this is... It's okay. This is literally what I do. You can sit and listen to a TV show while you're doing this. This is a good project to do while you're doing something else. Hope you guys are all having a good summer. We are. It's very hot in Florida where I live, but we're managing. It's kind of like up north in the winter. You try to stay inside as much as you can. That one's not long enough. Okay, so I'll do one more little piece and then I'll kind of show you the next step because I think you get the idea all right so now we just want to cut this portion off let me clear my area a little bit here Okay, so now this is what we have. Super crazy messy looking. And I just take 
something like the back of scissors or something and just really make sure that the fabric is attached. So I'm just gonna kind of rub the back of it. Make sure everything is nice and down. And then I'm gonna flip it over so that I see the side where you remove the paper and just come right along, not cutting into the tape, just right along the side and trim the side here. So now we're left with this pile of scraps and we got th this out of it. So it looks super fun, super pretty. You can come back and trim anything that's crooked if you want to. Um, so now we have this and let's move that out of the way. So now what I do is I come back and this is some, um, this Barely Art glue. Um, I like it a lot. I was using either 3-in-1 or Fabrifix, which I should put the lid back on. Whoops, let me hit me. Okay. I was using this all the time, but it's so expensive and it doesn't go as far. So I, I got this Barely Art glue and I just stuck it in these little precision bottles. And I got from Amazon, I got like 10 of them or something. And they come with a little funnel and I just fill it in there and I'm, I'm really liking it a lot. So anyway, I flip the fabric up, anything that's overhang and just put a tiny little bit, don't need a lot, anything that's not firmly, I mean, you wouldn't have to do this if you like it to be um, really loose kind of looking there, but I like to come in with the glue and just Kind of adhere it a little bit more and it just takes a few seconds it doesn't take a long time And now we have our washi tape. So that was that. And then what I would do if I were sitting doing making these is I would take the pile of scraps that I had from making this one and I would come in and either I could grab the same size and do it again, or if I wanted to make sure I'm utilizing the smaller pieces, I would come in with a smaller double-sided tape. This one's half an inch, this one was an inch. I don't know if I mentioned it. Um, and just kind of do the same thing. Roll it out. And just start layering again. I'll just do a few pieces so you guys can see what it looks like. And you don't have to do it this every which way you can do it let me see I think I had yeah I have an example here you can just do the pieces you know next to each other it just gives a lot of detail if you do these little pieces um, layered next to each other that's that's the only difference really I mean the other version is super quick so if you don't have the patience to do this version, then you can just do them straight next to each other. So see, I'm using this little teensy piece here. And I'm basically just covering up the tape.
Okay, so let's just trim this. So we'll leave that there and I'll just show you really quick how fast it is if you just want to do it like this. Or if you get tired of doing it and you want to just finish up your scraps, <laughs> you can just make some like this, which is, it's nice too. All right. And then again, we're gonna come in and trim. Trying not to cut the tape. And we've created more scraps. <laughs> I mean, this can, you can see how you can really get a lot of washi with a little bit of fabric, which is great if you're using your prized fabric, like my vintage quilt tops that I love so much. I don't want to waste any of that fabric. Okay, so then we would come in with the glue again or trim it, you can also trim it so it's not overhanging. And we've got this cute piece of washi tape. Kind of looks like a crazy quilt in the end. So we've got those. And we'll, I'll just show you this one. And we've got this one. Again, can come in with either glue or just come in with your scissors and trim it up a little bit. So different looks, but still fun. And there was one more thing I wanted. So, and then we also have all of this. <laughs> fabric still left over. It doesn't look like we did, made any dent in the scrap pile, but we did. And we got this wonderful product out of it. I love this. I hope you guys do too, because it you can see it's time consuming, but it adds a lot to journals, I think. Um, oh, there was one more thing I wanted to show you. So you can also, if you want to, to another idea is, so this is part of the quilt top. It's already pieced together. Um, you can flip it over. This is kind of like a cheater quick way there. And then take your tape and just lay it on the back here like this. This is if you have a quilt top, I would never go sewing them together and then do it this way, but you just want to make sure you really Tear it down and then you come in and you trim it again. So this would be a, a really, and I've done this, this is a good technique when there's more interest in the quilt than just the, I think these are maybe two by two or three by three squares. Um, but when there's, you know, like grandmother's garden quilt or I don't I'm not a quilting expert but one of the more fancy oops I took I cut the tape a little bit while I was talking um one of the more fancy quilts it will give more interest and it's a faster way to do this but you get the idea and you just kind of push the fabric down and trim it up and you have your washi, your quilt top, top washi. It is a little bumpy here where it was sewn together, but it's a much faster version and it would add texture. You would get the real feel of a quilt top. So 
I hope this was a useful video for you. If you have any questions, let me know. If you want to see any other, I have some other washi ideas I can share with you guys at some point. Um, but let me know what you thought of this and if it was helpful. And I will see you in the next video. Thanks. Have a night, great day. Bye.